have done many vocabulary videos specifically for the GRE exam, but this video is different. This video is for anyone who wants to learn more about some of the words used about this coronavirus crisis. I'm not an expert, I'm just a tutor who teaches English and maths, but there are a few words that I keep seeing in the media that I think not everyone will know. Plus, it's just good to have a better vocabulary in general. First, on the crisis though, obviously no one's meant to panic, but if I think about my audience, which is mainly in the US and India and the UK, all of those countries are being affected at the moment. And I am certainly social distancing, I'm working from home, and if you can, that would be a great idea staying away from bars, restaurants, etc. for the time being. I think the virus will be defeated, but it will take some time and it will depend on how many people follow the guidelines from the World Health Organization, which is to stay away from other people as much as possible. So I really hope all of you out there are okay and coping in this crisis and all my best wishes from London. Now let's get on to the words. And the first, probably the most obvious word to cover, is pandemic. What does it mean? A pandemic means when a disease is spread across the world to every continent. Pan meaning all in Greek. Demos meaning people. So it's affecting all people in all areas. Not literally every single individual, but it's just a disease that's become very widespread different to an epidemic, which is affecting one particular area, which we're going to cover in a second. A pandemic is affecting all areas, from the word pan, Greek, meaning all, the worldwide spread of a new infectious disease. Next, we have epidemic. An epidemic is when a disease is very prevalent in one particular region or country. It hasn't yet reached the scale of a pandemic. Epi means amongst in Greek. So it's amongst the people, but not all the people. It's not a pandemic, it's an epidemic. A widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in a community at a particular time. An epidemic. Next we have Corona, very appropriate. So Corona, you might be interested to know, is not just beer, it means from Latin corona or crown. A coronavirus, therefore, is so called for the spikes that protrude out from its membranes that resemble a crown or the corona of the sun. If you see the actual coronavirus down in the bottom right, you can see that those spikes coming out almost resembling a crown. And that's why it's called a coronavirus because of what it looks like. Glad we covered that one. What about the next word? Novel. It's often called the novel coronavirus, and that's nothing to do with a book, a novel, a fiction that you're reading. Novel means not just new, but strange or unusual. It's a novel coronavirus. It's a brand new one. They haven't seen it before. They first detected it in December. So it's very new, and that's why there are not as many reliable tests out there for it. And that's why it's taking the world by shock at the moment, because it's a novel coronavirus. There are other coronaviruses out there. This is a new or strange one. From Latin, novelis, meaning new or recent. So nothing to do with books. It's a novel coronavirus because it's a new one. Next, we have quarantine. You might be hearing about a lot of people self-isolating or quarantining themselves. What does that mean? A quarantine is a period or place of isolation. If you are quarantined, or if you quarantine yourself, you isolate yourself from others for a certain period, in a certain place, usually. Sometimes you might hear of an entire nation going into quarantine, so everyone in that nation is isolating. It's a strange word though, isn't it? Quarantine. Where does it come from? Very interesting etymology. It's from the Latin Quaranta, meaning 40, so-called, amazingly, from the Venetian, Venice, policy, first enforced in 1377, of keeping ships from plague-stricken countries waiting off its port for 40 days 
to assure that no latent cases were aboard, no cases that weren't immediately apparent. So it's really interesting, right? It comes from 40. They had that policy of keeping people on the ships for 40 days. Amazing that they knew that when we're just discovering now about how viruses can stay inside you for days and days and days, even weeks, without symptoms necessarily. And we're going to get on to some words relating to that. At the moment, they think the appropriate quarantine period is about 14 days for this coronavirus. So you no need to stay in for 40 days, but that's where the word comes from. And as you can see, humans have been dealing with these viruses for many, many centuries and millennia. If you quarantine yourself, you're not the first and you won't be the last. What about the next word? Asymptomatic. That's what I meant by those latent cases. You might have the disease, but you might not be showing any symptoms. That's what asymptomatic means. The A prefix means without, like words like atheist, for example. Asymptomatic, without symptoms. Not displaying any symptoms or effects of a disease yet. You might display them later on, but at the moment you're asymptomatic. Some very healthy young people might catch coronavirus and for the full week or two weeks, they're asymptomatic. They don't feel any symptoms. That's not particularly likely, but it is possible. So this is a Greek word with that prefix a, without. Communicable of a disease. What does that mean? You might have heard it on the media. It's a communicable disease. It means a disease that's able to be transmitted from one sufferer to another. It's infectious, basically contagious or infectious. But that word is kind of interesting, right? It's almost like communicate. Well, that's where communicate comes from. To share, to make common. It's a Latin word. You're sharing things in common, in this case, a disease. But to communicate, of course, is to share knowledge or information. But it's that same etymological root. You're making things common, you're sharing something. For a disease, communicable is not a good thing. It means it's infectious. It can spread from one person to another. Great word to add to your vocabulary. Next, you might have heard about the coronavirus having an incubation period. And that makes it kind of dangerous because there's a period of time, an incubation period, between when you catch the virus and when you necessarily show any symptoms or severe symptoms. So you might have it for two or three days, not show any symptoms, be asymptomatic, and then spread it to other people. And then you get symptoms and you might go into quarantine, but those other people then carry on with the disease. So an incubation period is not a good thing for a disease. It's the period between the infection and the appearance or signs of a disease. But it is an interesting word. Incubation comes from to incubate, meaning to lie on, literally like chickens, sitting on eggs, letting them brood, waiting for them to spring out of their egg, so to speak. Very interesting word and very important in terms of corona because, of course, the fact that there is an incubation period means that social distancing or staying away from other people is particularly important even if you don't yet have symptoms because you might have it due to this incubation period later on. Of course, it's particularly important to self-isolate if you have symptoms such as a fever, dry cough, etc. What about epidemiology? Or you might have heard of some experts going on TV who are epidemiologists. Well, the interesting thing with that, which I didn't know actually before researching for this video, Basically, that means someone who studies epidemics, that word we saw earlier, the spread of disease. Epidemiology is the study of epidemics. And therefore, if you are an epidemiologist, you study epidemics. I guess more appropriate, you could say, uh, for a title for those people at the moment would be pandemiologists, but uh, based on pandemic. But we'll stick with epidemiologists and those are the experts you see on TV giving advice about how diseases spread like this coronavirus. Next word, pulmonary. Very interesting word. 
This is to do with the effects that the coronavirus can have. Pulmonary means to do with the lungs. But it's an interesting word. I don't see lung anywhere in that word. So why is pulmonary to do with the lungs? It comes from an ancient, ancient language over 10,000 years old that was in the Ukraine area that went on to become the origin for many European languages, indeed some Indian languages like Sanskrit as well. And the root origin or the etymology is plo, which doesn't sound too similar, but you get the P and the L in there and the U. And that means to flow. And the linkage there to lungs, of course, is the air flowing through the lungs. Interestingly, that root, that Proto-Indo-European root, plo, also links to the word pneumonia, if you look at the spelling. Very similar beginning as well, except with an N. So to do with the lungs is plu from an ancient, ancient language. And that's why pulmonary means to do with the lungs. And the effect of the coronavirus is particularly felt in the lungs. Endemic. I thought I'd throw this word in because it's a word you sometimes hear and you might think it's linked to diseases, but it's actually not particularly. Endemic isn't just about diseases. It's more about when a species is only found in one area or country. That's the only time I've ever heard the word being used. So an endemic species, nothing to do with an epidemic, means one that you only get in that country. It doesn't go to other countries. You can't find it in other countries except maybe in zoos. An endemic species is a plant or an animal that you only find in that particular area or country. Again, not strictly related to the coronavirus, but I thought it's a word that causes some confusion to some people. They think endemic, does that mean epidemic? Next word, pandemonium. I thought I'd throw this one in because it sounds quite similar to pandemic and it's something that we hopefully are gonna avoid, pandemonium. Pandemonium means wild or noisy disorder or confusion uproar. Oh no, it's pandemonium. Sometimes in some shops in the US and the UK, maybe elsewhere, there are people rushing to buy toilet paper. Who could call that pandemonium? Wild disorder, confusion. But why does it sound so similar to pandemic? Because John Milton wrote this book, Paradise Lost, and pandemonium was this place where all the demons were. Pan, all, demonium, demons. And not a good place to be in, full of disorder, confusion, noise, and uproar. So for this crisis, we definitely want to avoid any pandemonium. And we now have, of course, virus. Where does the word virus actually come from? Well, just quickly, a virus is an infective agent that infects people that is too small to be seen by light microscopy. So very, very tiny and is able to multiply only within the living cells of a host. It's not actually alive technically. Bacteria is different. A bacterium is alive. A virus is more like a parasite. It doesn't actually live itself. It relies on its host. But what about the word? The Latin word virus actually means poison, interestingly. Obviously, the Romans didn't know about viruses in terms of those microscopic agents, but they did know that something that was a virus was poison, was not a good thing. Linked to the words virulence, which means like how damaging and how infectious a disease is. You don't want a disease to be virulent. You want it to be very tame. A virulent disease is one that spreads rapidly, easily, and does a lot of damage. Also, the word virus is linked to going viral, of course. Just like a, a virus infects people and it spreads out, often exponentially, if a video goes viral, then it's kind of like that, spreads around the entire world. Hopefully not like poison though. Coming to the end now, but I thought there was one more cool word to learn, and that is zoonotic. Firstly, it's a very fancy word. If you say it, everyone's gonna be like, whoa, this guy's smart. Or they might just think you're an idiot. Either way, I want you to know the word zoonotic. A zoonotic disease 
is one that normally exists in animals, but that can infect humans. And the coronavirus is a zoonotic disease. It originated in an animal and then went on to infect humans, probably due to someone eating an animal. I'm a vegetarian, but I, lots of people do eat animals. And the prime animal suspect so far for the coronavirus is the pangolin, which is an endangered creature. I think it's found mostly in Asia that looks like a cross between an anteater and an armadillo. So it started in a pangolin, most likely. I've heard a bat as well. And then it was eaten, they think. And that's how a zoonotic disease spreads. It goes from an animal to a human. That's not the only way it spreads. I think malaria is also a zoonotic disease because it relies on an animal. In that case, the mosquito for its spread. And that was the last word in the series. I really hope it's helped to demystify some of the jargon, some of the complex words you're hearing on TV and help you understand this coronavirus a bit more. Causing a lot of people to panic. No need to panic, but obviously we do want to follow the appropriate behavior. I hope all of my viewers and even all of the people not viewing this stay really safe, follow the guidelines. And even those people watching this video months and years from now when the coronavirus is long gone, I hope you at least learn many of these words and add them to your vocabulary. Thank you so much for watching.